r slash ask reddit what villain was terrifying because they were right ken from the b movie i too would go absolutely berserk if a talking bee stole my girlfriend and gaslit me into thinking i was crazy colonel kurtz we train young men to drop fire on people but their commanders won't allow them to ride fuck on their airplanes because it's obscene not a true villain but squidward Damn is Spongebob an annoying neighbor I'd hate him too. Ultron, browsed the internet for 30 seconds and decided humanity had to go. Count Dooku just straight up told Obi-Wan that the Sith control the Senate. The replicants from Blade Runner. Used as slaves and given artificially short lives. They just wanted to live and be free. The bears from Goldilocks and the tree bears. Otto from Wally. It was one of the only almost perfectly executed AI villains. He never really talks unless needed because he wasn't programmed to, no malicious motives, does everything efficiently. He's only bad because he's following his programming, protect the humans and don't let them back to Earth. Not out of malicious intent, but it was what he was programmed to do. And his directive isn't even incorrect. Wally finding that plant was like finding a four-leaf clover in a field of grain. The planet was nowhere near habitable, and they barely know how to stand when they get back, in reality you know nobody on that axiom is going to make it very far. Edit, some of you missed the main point of the original post and started arguments on how humans could survive, remember me thinking they wouldn't make it far alone is only any theory and i'm not saying it's 100 percent truth but i'm kinda tired and i keep getting people saying the same thing so i thought i would just say that so i could go to sleep and hopefully have a couple less people ticked off when i wake up than i would had i not said that edit 2 well i woke up and this comment blew up a bit just want to say that contrary to popular belief i did watch the end credits it's a pixar movie did you expect them to actually show civilization fail and die? I just had a theory on what would happen if they went with a more grim approach. They could still live, but they also had a chance they wouldn't, without the couple minutes end credits thrown in at the last second it's really just an open-ended question I added one of many answers to. Gila DOS, she was absolutely right, you are a terrible person. General Hummel from The Rock. Magneto. He knew the hate humans had for mutants, and wasn't as blindly optimistic as Xavier. True Malcolm X of the mutant rights movement. The Hamburglar was just trying to save children from childhood obesity. Bobby Heenan. Spent the 80s telling us how awful and selfish Hulk Hogan was. Was proven absolutely correct in 1996. In hindsight, Heenan was trying to save us all from the inevitable scourge of Hollywood Hogan. Arya's parents on Pretty Little Liars. They're villainized for not letting their high school daughter date her teacher. See also, Magneto, the Holocaust survivor, not wanting his species genocide. Ozymandias. He outsmarted the most powerful being in the universe, and won there actually weren't flaws in his logic or execution. None of you said the most terrifying one. Mo Jojo -Jo from the Powerpuff Girls. He wanted to bring free energy and advanced technology to the people. And in one episode he actually did. He made the world an amazing place. And then the Powerpuff Girls ruined it all. Stevie from Wizards of Waverly Place. Her entire goal was to stop families from giving up their magic to just one person in the family. Like, we're really supposed to be rooting against her? It just seemed super out of character for Alex to go against that plan. Edit, thanks for all the upvotes. I got to experience seeing something I put on Reddit appear on my FYP on TikTok for the first time face with tears of joy. Magneto is my favorite villain of all time. Every time his motives are brought to light I get that yeah, I kinda get it moment. Roy Batty. What was done to him and his kind was wrong and he had righteous anger. 
Frankenstein's monster. Adam. Created by a short-sighted, arrogant doctor as the first of his race, then denied the opportunity to be part of a community, of his own, man-made beings, or the human community. He only became monstrous after it became clear that Frankenstein would never create another of his kind, and was driven mad by his desire to punish Frankenstein's hubris. The guy in Cora who wanted to end special privileges for vendors. Perfectly captured that right idea, fascist execution concept and dread. Dracula in Castlevania, the series. Maul. His last words before being captured by the Republic was, you're all going to burn. You're all going to die. You don't know what you're doing. He tried to warn Ahsoka of Palpatine's ultimate plan, but she didn't listen. Not really sure if you can consider him a villain. But Peacemaker when he went on a rant about Batman causing countless deaths because he refuses to kill supervillains. Screen Slaver from The Incredibles 2. The monologue given during that movie regularly rings in my head. I'm sure the creepy bass robotic voice doesn't help too. The Screen Slaver interrupts this program for an important announcement. Don't bother watching the rest. Elastigirl doesn't save the day, she only postpones her defeat. And while she postpones her defeat, you eat chips and watch her invert problems that you are too lazy to deal with. Superheroes are part of a brainless desire to replace true experience with simulation. You don't talk, you watch talk shows. You don't play games, you watch game shows. Travel, relationships, risk, every meaningful experience must be packaged and delivered to you to watch at a distance so that you can remain ever sheltered, ever passive, ever ravenous consumers who can't free themselves to rise from their couches to break a sweat, never anticipate new life. You want superheroes to protect you, and make yourselves ever more powerless in the process. Well, you tell yourselves you're being looked after. That you're inches from being served and your rights are being upheld. So that the system can keep stealing from you, smiling at you all the while. Go ahead, send your supers to stop me. Grab your snacks, watch your screens, and see what happens. You are no longer in control. I am. TLDR, you think everything will always be okay and while you remain distracted, the powers that be will continue to steal from you. Edit, I'm absolutely loving reading through these replies and how varying our understanding of the monologue can be. It definitely was intended to reach all audiences to say hey whatever evil you perceived as the problem and whatever super you perceived as the solution doesn't matter as long as you remain complacent. Just love it. Lex Luthor. We're only safe as long as Superman think it's fun to be the hero. King Kong. Not even because he was right. He was just alive. Minding his own business and blam taken out of his home and made to be the villain without any choice. A real good example of human nature. Edit a word. The Matrix is Agent Smith, I tried to classify your species. I realized that you're not actually mammals. Every mammal on this planet instinctively develops a natural equilibrium with their surrounding environment, but you humans do not. You move to another area, and you multiply, until every natural resource is consumed. The only way you can survive is to spread to another area. There is another organism on this planet that follows the same pattern. Do you know what it is? A virus. Human beings are a disease, a cancer of this planet. Syndrome, when everyone's super, nobody is. Poison Ivy and MR. Freeze. Terminator 2, it's in your nature to destroy yourselves. DR. Dupinch Mertz. Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin from Spider-Man. In spite of everything you've done for them, eventually, they will hate you. Dude was right about how the perception of public figures changes over time. I wasn't really terrified of it but N was in right in my opinion when we're talking Pokemon. 
Dude thought getting these creatures and making them fight till one is knocked out wasn't that amazing of an idea and it just made sense to kid me. That all said I think N is a really interesting character that can be interpreted in many different ways. Of all the main leaders of these games, I think N had the best argument. It wasn't perfect though. I like N a lot for his character development. I agree with him at the end. Real Pokemon mistreatment should not be tolerated. But a Pokemon trainer simply using Pokemon in battles does not qualify as mistreatment as the Pokemon is happy. The Pokemon like the trainers, that is the best you should wish for there. All in all, I wish Pokemon had good stories and characters like this again tbh. MR. Wilson from Dennis the Menace. I root for Magneto when watching the X-Men movies. He's objectively right, and Days of Future Past proves it. Poison Ivy is an environmentalist at heart and Raj Al Ghul is a humanitarian. Both were pushed into extremism after the broken system they're trying to fix simply refused to change for so long that they decided the system itself needed to be torn down. Where is Q from Star Trek? He introduced the Borg just to prove a point. For all that it mattered, save for a literal deus ex machina, Mass Effect's Sovereign was right, you exist because we allow it, and you will end because we demand it. There was no stopping the Reapers. None. Not one iota of legitimate hope. Sovereign laid it out like it was the facts it was, without ego, pride, or delusion. And you knew he was right. Two. The mom in MRS. Doubtfire. The boss MGS3. I raised you. I loved you. I've given you weapons, taught you techniques, endowed you with knowledge. There is nothing more for me to give you. All that's left for you to take is my life, by your own hand. One must die and one must live. No victory, no defeat. The survivor will carry on the fight. It is our destiny. The one who survives will inherit the title of boss. And the one who inherits the title of boss will face an existence of endless battle. Maleficent. The king was a piece of shit and deserved everything she did to him. The Reapers from Mass Effect, in the original Bioware ending before EA changed it. All they were trying to do was stop advanced races from using so much dark matter that they wiped out all life in the galaxy before other races were allowed to come along. If it wasn't for them, humanity wouldn't just not exist, but every species in the entire cycle, every species in every cycle, everyone would have died as the stars went out, this horrific fast heat death event, over the course of a few thousand years. Except a small group of leviathans, in the early days of the universe, realized what was going to happen, and sacrificed their entire civilization to save all future life in the galaxy. And when Shepard destroys their ships in the third one. Every one of those ships is a museum, a living record of every previous civilization, and they're destroying the only thing that was able to be left from them. To fight the Reapers is to fight against everyone who has ever lived and everyone who ever will live. The Reapers don't just have a point, they've saved more lives than we can even fathom. Their only flaw is that they were never able to find a solution that was better than wiping out civilization every few thousand years and preserving whatever they could find. Red Queen Resident Evil, I have locked down this facility to prevent a world-ending virus, please could you good guys pay attention and not blow holes in the doors. Gore the God Butcher from Thor Love and Thunder. Even if the end was a bit cheesy he truly is right and terrifying because of it. Dexter Morgan. I wouldn't say he was a villain, but what he did was right even if illegal. For sure Vulture slash Adrian Tombs in Spider-Man Homecoming. It was not necessarily terrifying, but I still remember I'm sitting there watching that movie and I'm like hey this guy actually has a point. After Spider-Man and mainly Tony Stark fucked him over on purpose I was like yeah Adrian, fuck those guys. Senator Armstrong, he predicted our future in 2013. 
the Red Hood. Batman beats insane people up. They go to Arkham, are usually experimented on there and come back worse. In a way I that makes Batman one of the worst perpetuators of Gotham's constant decline into savagery. The Red Hood just straight up kills them. Edit, holy sh asterisk t. I made this post yesterday and expected. Well. Not 800 upvotes. The sharks from Sharnado. Can you imagine you're just swimming around, minding your own business, then all of a sudden a tornado picks you up out of nowhere, drops you on land, and now you have to deal with Tara Reed. Yeah, I would start biting people too. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you have enjoyed this video and subscribe to never miss an upload.